Yeah. Analytics off the chain, all the channels not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headline Nation, we running the game. Yo, what is going on, Headliner Nation? Welcome back into the Fantasy Headliners. And in today's video, we're talking about life hacks to win at fantasy football. And as part of those hacks, I'm actually got a little bit of a surprise for you. For those of you that have maybe never purchased our draft guide, I am going to be using our draft guide from 2021 to show you some different parts of that that can help you with these life hacks. So, is this an infomercial? Not really, because I am still going to be talking about certain players, talking about certain strategies, and talking about things that you should prepare for, things that you should do, even starting right now, to get ready for your fantasy football draft. So smash the like button for me. Subscribe if you're new here to the Fantasy Headliners. And at the end of the video, leave me a comment down below. You know, let me know some of your thoughts. What are you thinking when it comes to life hacks for fantasy football? Is there anything that you do to really prepare yourself for the season? And don't forget, if you watch this video that goes over all these life hacks and gives you a sneak peek at what our fantasy football draft guide looks like, use the link down below to pre-order the draft guide. Make sure you have your account set up at Pristine Auction, code word headliners, it's free, because we're going to be giving away some autograph material. We have full-size autograph helmets. We have a Debo Samuel full-size autograph helmet that you're not going to want to miss out on. But we're going to make uh, some picks here at the end of the month for people who have pre-ordered to give some things away. So make sure that you do that. But I think it's time to hop into it right now, ladies and gentlemen. Using our draft guide from last season, what are some fantasy hacks or what are some life hacks to win at fantasy football? All right, the biggest life hack to winning at fantasy football is being prepared. And one of the ways that you can be prepared is by getting our fantasy football draft guide. So what we wanted to do this year is to give you a little bit of a sneak peek as to what our draft guide would look like. And for some reason, you've never bought one before. I'm going to go through our draft guide, point out a different, a few different areas that you can really utilize to get yourself prepared for drafts and be ready to go, not only for the beginning of the season, but throughout the entire year. Our draft guide, completely online. You log in through our website, and after you log in, you have access to this beautiful page that has different PDFs and videos and things of that nature. All these different things can be found in the draft guide, all right? So, what are some areas in here that you should really utilize? Because they are, in my opinion, hacks to succeeding at fantasy football. Well, the first one for me is the perfect draft. Okay, This is an area of the draft guide where you can go in and look at where you're drafting and determine, and we kind of go through and talk about it with you, what could your perfect draft look like? Like If you were to go through and hit these areas, what would it look like? And it's always good, number one, to prepare for different options, especially for those of you that don't know your draft order until a little bit later in the offseason. Now, some of you have different things that you do um, where maybe you use last year's, you know, whatever, you know, last year's finishing spots, whatever the standings were going in reverse order. Some of you have different punishments. I know people like to get creative out there and even do some different things where, uh, I think there was one, I think there was one group and this kind of ties over to headliner breaks where we do cards. They do like, they get like a box of cards and they go through and everybody gets a pack and whoever has like the most expensive pack or whatever ends up getting the first pick and like different things like that. People do crazy stuff to get picked. So first off, it's always good to be prepared for anything, right? Never really be prepared for one spot in your draft unless you know where it's coming, obviously, and then you can prepare for that spot. 
But all it's always good to prepare for multiple spots, especially for those of you that play in multiple leagues and maybe you do know in one area. So you say, hey, my biggest league, I know I'm going to be drafting second overall this year. So you really focus in on that. But then you just kind of forget about the other leagues because you don't know where you're drafting yet. And because of that, you haven't really prepared for it. So try to prepare for all the draft spots. Look at every single spot to see, okay, this is where I think I'm going to be going this year. So let's go down to the mid first round because what I do is I talk about the mid first round kind of in one of those areas of saying, Hey, you know, with this area, you could be in a 12 team league really anywhere between like five and seven, five and eight, somewhere in that area. I consider to be that mid first round. I give you some guys that you could look at that might fall a little bit to you. And I give you some guys that might end up dropping a little bit back to you. And with the mid first round draft pick, Again, kind of talking about guys just a little bit ahead, a little bit of behind. Alvin Kamara, obviously, you know, down year last year. We didn't see the Alvin Kamara that we've been used to. Nick Chubb, though, I mean, Nick Chubb, another good year. You guys can argue about the upside all you want to, but if you drafted Nick Chubb and you lost your fantasy league, you didn't lose your fantasy league because of Nick Chubb. In the mid-second round, I listed Najee Harris and DeAndre Hopkins. Najee Harris was obviously a guy um, that had a great season for you. DeAndre Hopkins was the guy, unfortunately, with injuries ended up derailing him. Clyde Edwards Alaire didn't work out last year, but we listed Keenan Allen in the mid third round. That would have been another good pick for you there. And the mid fourth round, Mike Evans would have been another solid ad- addition for you. David Montgomery is a guy that, yes, at times he was helping out, dealt with that injury. That was unfortunate. But if you look at these, you know, injuries, unfortunately, derailed a lot of seasons. Uh, in the mid-fifth round, Cooper Cup. I mean, just look at that. If you drafted, like, Nick Chubb, Najee Harris, Keenan Allen, Mike Evans, Cooper Cup. Oh, you were sitting pretty last year, ladies and gentlemen. Cooper Cup, we listed as a guy to grab in the mid-fifth round. In the mid-sixth round, DJ Chark ended up getting hurt early on, but Dallas Goddard ended up giving you uh, some decent performances, especially towards the end of the year after Ertz ended up leaving. Uh, mid seventh round with Tom Brady or Devontae Smith gave you these guys. Um, these both would have been good options for you. Brandon Cooks was a guy in the mid eighth round that did well. Trey Sermon obviously didn't do anything. Ur Smith Jr. got hurt early on, but Jalen Waddle in the mid ninth round, you definitely were balling because of that. So this right here is a really great aspect of of the draft guide where you're really not only preparing for each of the potential draft spots, but you're preparing for multiple guys in each draft spot. That way, obviously, if you plan a little bit behind, then you could say, all right, if this guy falls, I really want him. If you plan a little bit ahead, then if your guys aren't there, then it's like, okay, you know, if you draft a guy in the fourth round that has a fifth round ADP, but there's nobody at that current ADP, just go get him. Like, we don't want to sit back and just wait for guys to come to us. If there's nobody else in that area, who cares if you drafted him early? Go draft him early, especially if you think that, hey, by the time we get there, I might be fighting over him with some other people. Just go get him. And this is a great way to prepare for that. And again, that's one of those life hacks that I'm talking about is is that preparedness, preparing for multiple guys at each position and understanding that if you miss on one, then we have other guys there. In terms of preparing, number two for life hacks, know your matchups. Know your matchups. We go through every year and we do a matchup meter and we break down the entire schedule for you, showing you exactly what matchups could be good matchups, what matchups could be difficult matchups, and then really preparing you for what could be some good playoff matches as well easiest stretches of the season. So taking a look at based on the rankings and based on other things, what are going to be some easy stretch of the seasons for different teams? What are going to be the hardest stretches of certain parts of the season for teams? Who could have the best start to the season? I mean, you take a look at like the Carolina Panthers. DJ Moore got off to a great start last year, right? We take a look at the Cincinnati Bengals. Jamar Chase got off to a great start last year. With the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, the Steelers had a great start as well, honestly, uh, in terms of production for like Najee Harris. You know, he was getting off to a good start. Knowing your bye weeks. Now, I'm not a guy that says I'm going to skip on people because of bye weeks. I don't do that, okay? I let the bye weeks play out later on. But it's always a good idea to know in advance what weeks are going to have the most bye weeks. Like week seven, buy, buy again. I forget what we called it last year. But 
look at that. I mean, you had six teams on a bye. Week seven was really, really tough, especially for those of you coming down a little bit later into the season where you had some matchups where you had to win. Well, if you had guys like Josh Allen, Ezekiel Elliott, maybe Austin Eckler, Justin Jefferson, Najee Harris. Like if you had guys like that, week seven ended up being just an absolute torture for you because you had so many guys missing. So even though, hey, go get the best guys, you know, don't skip on a guy just because maybe you have three guys on a bye week seven. However, it's good to keep that in the back of the mind. Number one, when you're putting in waiver wires, when you're taking a look at the waiver wire, and who you're picking up. If this is a guy that you think really, you know, if it maybe it's between two guys and you think both guys are going to be able to help you and one guy has a buy in week 7 but the other one has a buy in like week 9 and you say to yourself, "Man, I've got all these guys on a buy in week 7. Let me grab the guy on a buy in week 9 so then I can use him to fill in." So again, it's good to just have that information in the back of your head. Easiest playoff schedule, you know, running backs, quarterbacks, some guys that are going to have an easier schedule when it comes down a little bit later in the season. Now, obviously, Chris Godwin ended up getting hurt last year. Uh, Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy were kind of a mess for a majority of the season because of that offense. Russell Wilson ended up being hurt at one point and just never came back to be himself. But like a guy like Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk towards the end of the year, you know, and Mike Evans too, they were pegged as being guys that, you know, in a playoff schedule, when you're in the playoffs, these are guys that you probably want to have on your roster that could really help you out. All those guys finished very, very strong to the season, but not just finishing strong to the season, but, you know, kind of a 2B here for life hacks for winning at fantasy football. 2B, what about guys that could get, a hot start, you know, a good way to kind of have this idea of who has, who's going to have a hot start. Who's going to be a guy that's going to get off to a quick, you know, quick points, get me going real good for a couple of different reasons. Number one, it's always good to identify those guys early on in the season. Cause if they do get off to a hot start, you have to try and determine, is it an actual start? Or like, is this something that we are going to see from a guy for the entire season? Or was this just this little snippet of the season? Because in a redraft league, if you determine who gets off to a hot start and you take a look at it, it could be guys that you end up at some point trading and moving away from to determine, hey, you know, like my, Najee Harris here was a guy last year who we said, hey, could end up getting off to a pretty decent start depending on who he was getting against. Um, obviously Buffalo may have been a tough start, but then Las Vegas, Cincinnati, Green Bay, Tennessee, some of those teams ended up performing a little bit better than what we had anticipated. DJ Moore last year got off to a really, really good start. Justin Jefferson absolutely killed it out of the, out of the start. We're going to just, def we're going to just act like Jacksonville didn't happen last year. So this, you can just mark it off. Urban Meyer ruined that. But anyway, guys off to a hot start. So then again, you can determine whether or not these are guys that you hold on to for the rest of the season. Do you try and trade them? If their value is never going to be higher, do you trade them for some of the guys that we looked at in the last part of uh, of two, where we took a look at who's going to be, you know, who's going to have easier schedules later in the year? You can always come back to that and reference that and say, okay, player A that I chose off to a great start. First five games, top five at his position. Is this real? Go and check the matchup meter and say, man, this might be real, but his fine, you know, five of his last six games are going to be guys that are going to be against teams that are in the top, you know, 10 defenses or whatever it may be. Maybe it would be best if I decide to move on right now and really try to establish, hey, I'm giving up a top five guy now, but maybe I get like two guys back that could help me is starters right away, give me a little bit of depth, maybe give you another another trade piece to go after a different spot if you're if you're maybe a little bit a little bit on the lower side in an area, go give yourself an upgrade. Those are all things you can do. Honestly, number 2 life hacks about winning at fantasy football, you always got to be thinking, all right? You always got to be thinking, you always got to be prepared, you always got to have these these situations, these scenarios playing in the back of your mind. Number 3 Number three, determining what are some really good life hacks for winning at fantasy football. You know us here at the Fantasy Headliners. We love ourselves some running backs. And because of that, we always want to try and identify guys later on that are going to have just absolute opportunity at the wide receiver position. So what guys can we get after we get our running backs? Can we get that are going to be at a good value that are going to have opportunity? 
vacated targets do a really good job of that. Now, obviously, this doesn't tell the whole picture. Okay, so you have to make sure that you say to yourself, okay, this, if I just look at this and I just draft based on this, it's not going to help me. But knowing that the Arizona Cardinal has had 156 vacated targets last season would let you know, all right, I've got an opportunity here to kind of establish who from Arizona could I take. Maybe it's Christian Kirk, right? You knew that we were going to have 156 vacated targets from the Arizona Cardinals going from 2020 to 2021. So if you took a look at Christian Kirk and you said, hey, maybe he picks up some of those targets and you grab him, that does well for you. For the Carolina Panthers, 200 vacated targets. Who are those going to go to? Cincinnati, 195 vacated targets. Well, if they have 195 vacated targets, you have to assume that 100 of those could potentially end up going to Jamar Chase. We're smashing Jamar Chase at his ADP. For the Detroit Lions, 360 vacated targets. So you say to yourself, okay, 360 vacated targets? Yes, sir. Amon Ross St. Brown. And actually, if we go back and we look at the perfect draft, I think when we went down a little bit later, because we're going to skip back here for just a second, late round tight end strategy. So the perfect draft also goes into different strategies that you could do within the perfect draft to really set set yourself up for success. So some of these guys that we lifted, like Rob Gronkowski ended up being a really good option later on in the draft. Zach Ertz ended up being a good option later on in the draft. Late round quarterback strategy, taking a lot look at what quarterbacks, late round targets, running back handcuffs. Kenyon Drake performed well at times. AJ Dillon did. Tony Pollard was a breakout. This was written before Gus Edwards went down. Um, Jamal Williams, you know, was okay at the beginning of the season. He got hurt, so he wasn't really being able to help when Don DeAndre Swift was hurt. Daryl Henderson was a big one. Look at that. Rashad Penny. For those of you that maybe grabbed Rashad Penny and held on to him, he rewarded you at the end of the season. What about late round targets for wide receivers? Well, look who's listed here in the slot. Cole Beasley ended up smashing his ADP last year. Amon Ross St. Brown smashed his ADP last year. Elijah Moore was very good at times. Sterling Shepard was a top 10 wide receiver at times. Okay, those are all guys right there. Looking up here, big play wide receivers. Mike Williams was a guy that was a top 10 wide receiver to start the season. If you looked at late round targets and you had him listed, boom, you got him in the 10th round. Darnell Mooney was listed in the 11th round. He went for over 1,000 yards last year. Gabriel Davis smashed at the end of the season and really helped out. Okay, So, again, kind of going back to that situation right there, when you take a look at vacated targets, you know that's why some of these guys were listed because we knew vacated targets were potentially going to be there, and that gave you a really great option to start taking a look and saying, who's going to get those vacated targets? Who could they go to? Are they going to be split out among different wide receivers? Do we have an alpha that's coming in that could really do it? All those things, all of those things are ones that you have to keep in mind, that you have to keep going through and addressing and thinking about as you're getting ready to do your draft. And not just as your draft, you know, this is stuff that, you know, once you buy this, it's still there for the entire season. So if you're going through and you're looking at things, especially like matchup meter and stuff, you can always go back and look at it later on and say, okay, who's in here that maybe, okay, these could be tough weeks coming up. It it can help you a little bit later on. Now that's not its purpose, but you could still go back and do some research for that. And another one, okay, so we've got life hack 1A, 1B, 2, and 3. Life hack number 4, know your running back handcuffs, all right? And if you know Swag Rich, you know we love our handcuffs around here. <laughs> All right, running back handcuffs. A lot of people have been saying it in the comments this year. They've been saying, hey, listen, I'm drafting a wide receiver first this year because I'm tired of dealing with the running back injuries. If you're handcuffing your running backs, it doesn't matter, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, Yes, obviously there's a possibility that two guys on the same team could end up getting hurt, but there's just as big a possibility as running backs and why. I mean, anybody can get hurt at any given time on the football field. Yes, maybe running backs do have a little bit of an opportunity to get hurt than what a wide receiver does, but if you've drafted a running back like Aaron Jones and you've taken A.J. Dillon behind him, you should be good if Aaron Jones goes down. Kareem Hunt, another one. Look at who's on here. James Conner. James Conner was one of our top running back handcuffs last year. We were telling people, smash James Conner, take him now. Everybody wanted to be on Chase Edmonds. We said, grab James Conner. So even if you drafted Chase Edmonds and then took James Conner later on, boom, 
Perfect. That's exactly what you want. Chuba Hubbard, he ended up stepping in for a while. Now, it wasn't great, but he stepped in for a while, obviously, when McCaffrey was hurt. Tavius Murray, you know, obviously not much last year. Tony Pollard, though. Tony Pollard had a breakout season. If you drafted Tony Pollard last year, there was a good chance that you were starting him at your flex potentially on a weekly basis. But again, Zeke misses time with an injury. Didn't last year. But if he did, if he missed an extended point, you were set with Tony Pollard. Leonard Fournette is listed here. Forget Benny Snell. We were just we were just telling people if you drafted Najee Harris, just back him up just in case. Leonard Fournette is listed on here, right? I mean, Ronald Jones was a guy that was worrying some people about Leonard Fournette. And top running back handcuffs, we listed Leonard Fournette, all right? That's what you got to do. At the running back position, don't be scared to draft running backs, but use a late-round pick on their handcuff. Pick up their handcuff. Who cares? Who cares that it might be a wasted bench spot? I see that argument a lot. People are like, don't draft your own handcuffs. Draft handcuffs for other teams. That's not going to do me any good if my guy gets hurt. Because if my guy gets hurt and your guy doesn't get hurt and I have your handcuff, who cares, right? It's not doing me any good, all right? I'd rather take the chance that my own handcuff would end up stepping in. That's what I would rather have. So take a bench spot up with your handcuff. Don't be afraid to draft a running back. If you're afraid of Christian McCaffrey getting hurt this year, draft his handcuff. If you're afraid of Dalvin Cook getting hurt, draft his handcuff. If you're afraid of DeAndre Swift getting hurt, draft his handcuff. Just do that. Because then you put yourself in a situation where even if you lose the guy to injury, you're all set. So for top running back back handcuffs to own, these are guys that you take a look at in here and say, okay, I have the starter. I need to get the the backup. I got to have the handcuff because there's some things that worry me. But also on the other side of the fence, like I mentioned to go, you could draft someone else's handcuff if you wanted to as well. Maybe you don't draft, you know, maybe you don't draft Aaron Jones. So you're like, I'm going to skip on AJ Dillon. But you look at somebody else's team and you say, hey, I he's got Zeke. I, I, I got to grab Tony Pollard. Like, I want Tony Pollard. I like him. I could use him. If Zeke goes down, I'm good. And because we have him listed as a top running back handcuff here, it could put you in a really great situation to just be able to say, boom. All right, I'm ready to go. I can jump this guy in and I'm all set. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, life hacks to winning at fantasy football. And to help you with those life hacks, you can pre-order our draft guide right now at the link down below and get yourself all ready to just dominate your leagues up and down this year, all right? And if you do pre-order your draft guide, you know, sign up over at Pristine Auction as well. Get yourself an account for people who pre-order their draft guide now through uh, through the month of June. You can win some really, really cool stuff from Pristine Auction. So make sure that you do both of those things, but have your account set up and ready to go. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to get out of here. All of you stay safe and stay healthy. Pre-order your draft guide. Get ready to win some fantasy football leagues. And I will check you out next time on the Fantasy Headliners. Analytics all the chain, all the channels, not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headline Nation, we running the game. Y'all stuck on third down. Your content's plain change. Headlines on top now. We gonna move and change. Podcast off the rip. Draft guide, so legit. Fantasy world, our game tight. You know we about that chub life. Stuck in a rut. And you need some motivation. Face head to the channel for this headline nation. I'm a headliner.